Hi everyone, my name is Brett Drummond and I'm a science communicator and one of the co-founders of MS Translate. I'm here to talk to you about some more to do with the latest links between Epstein-Barr virus or EBV and multiple sclerosis. If you have been watching our channel lately, you will have seen us provide a couple of other research summary updates on this topic. If you do follow our channel or are new to our channel but haven't yet subscribed, make sure you do click on the subscribe button just below this video to make sure you stay up to date with all of our content as soon as it's published. So click on that subscribe button now. So just to quickly go over those recent research summaries before I talk about the potential therapeutic implications of this research. What you all have seen in these other two videos, one a German study that was published last year and more recently a study out of Harvard that was published uh, this month, Basically, the outcome of this research is just that it appears to be that 100% of people living with multiple sclerosis have been infected with Epstein-Barr virus. Now, this isn't necessarily a new finding, but there's a couple of little extra details in those studies that are important. And again, you can get all of those details by watching our previous videos. But essentially what this means is it appears that infection with Epstein-Barr virus or EBV uh, is a necessary or critical component to develop MS. Now, what's important around this is that it's not sufficient. We know that everyone that gets infected with Epstein-Barr virus does not go on to develop multiple sclerosis. So um, sort of to break that down into exactly what we know at the moment or what is hypothesized off the back of these two studies is that infection with EBV is necessary but not sufficient to cause multiple sclerosis. And so in some way, it must be that there is interaction uh, of the Epstein-Barr virus with other genetic and potentially other environmental factors that contribute to the development of multiple sclerosis. And most likely there's a timing aspect to it that's really important as well. So while we have this understanding and there's much more that we will need to learn about those interactions to really understand how Epstein-Barr virus is involved in multiple sclerosis, these findings do open up some potentially novel therapeutic options. And I'm going to talk about a couple of them uh, in this video. We've had a lot of questions on our other videos about them, so I thought it would be worth just summarizing these uh, potential outcomes in another video uh, here today. So one question that came up a bit was around, you know, what is happening with an EBV vaccine? Why don't we have an EBV vaccine yet? And it's a fantastic question. So there have been attempts to create an Epstein-Barr virus vaccine for a number of years. EBV can cause uh, infectious mononucleosis, also known as mono, um, or glandular fever. They're the same disease, just called different things in different parts of the world. And so obviously having a vaccine for EBV would help prevent this, but it's also been implicated now in multiple sclerosis, but also in cancers and other diseases. So there has been an interest in creating a vaccine for a while. The difficulty has been finding a target uh, and a treat, uh, vaccine approach that has been successful. So there have been a number of trials that have looked into different uh, approaches that may work for this, uh, but unfortunately, they haven't been successful. Now, as we've seen over the past couple of years with the development of coronavirus vaccines, we've seen mRNA vaccines become a viable approach to vaccine development. And so one of the silver linings of the COVID-19 pandemic has been that it's fast-tracked this technology. Now, this isn't necessarily new technology, and that's a miscommunication that has come up a lot during the course of the pandemic. But researchers have been looking into mRNA vaccines for decades now. It's just that the pandemic fast-tracked it when there was a lot of resources uh, and effort that went into getting these COVID-19 vaccines. And so off the back of that, Moderna, one of the companies that's actually made one of the COVID-19 vaccines, has just launched a phase one trial for an mRNA vaccine for Epstein-Barr virus. Now, this is obviously very new. Um, and so they've only just, I believe, uh, injected the first healthy participant with this vaccine. And so there are a number of trials that need to be undertaken to see whether or not this will be successful. But let's just go a little bit down the way and we can't get ahead of ourselves because we know that uh, it's really important to keep these, these findings in context. But what could a potential EBV vaccine mean for multiple sclerosis? 
Well, if we look at how we're hypothesizing that these other two studies are um, sort of categorizing what they mean for multiple sclerosis in that Epstein-Barr virus infection seems to be critical for the development of, of MS. If we had an effective vaccine that could prevent that infection, then potentially this would also then work to be a preventative to stop the development of MS. Now, we are getting a number of steps ahead of ourselves at this point. We have a vaccine that's only gone into one individual that needs to be trialed to see if it's effective. That is a long process in itself. And there are many stages in that where we might find that this particular approach isn't effective and they need to go back to the drawing board. Even if this is effective, we would then need to take it a step further and do trials in people living with multiple sclerosis, or actually, sorry, in other individuals' healthy controls, because in this instance, we're trying to prevent MS from ever developing. Um, we would need to see whether or not we saw a decrease in the incidence of MS. At the moment, this is all just a theory based on what we know, but certainly an avenue that will be interesting to see how it develops and theoretically has some good potential. On the other hand, there are no, another uh, set of treatment approaches that are looking at treating the EBV infection uh, in people living with multiple sclerosis. So you may have seen in the previous videos that I mentioned that infection with EBV is, uh, tends to be a chronic infection. So it's never completely cleared by the immune system. And so we're not completely sure, but there are some theories that suggest that this chronic infection with EBV uh, is not only involved in the development uh, of multiple sclerosis, as these other studies suggest, but also perhaps in the ongoing worsening and progression of the disease. So there are a number of research groups that are looking to see whether or not uh, treating that chronic EBV infection can help to be a treatment for multiple sclerosis. Will treating one have treatment benefits for the other? And so the way that this is being done, and there have been some really early trials done here in Australia, Professor Michael Pender from Queensland uh, did some, some really early trials with this. And in his approach, what happened, and he released a case study with a single individual living with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, where they took out the T cells from this individual and cultured them up in a lab. So T cells are cells that are part of the immune system, and we know that they're particularly important for clearing virally infected cells. And so what he did with these T cells is he took them up and he cultured them with some parts of the Epstein-Barr virus. You don't need to know the mechanics of any of this, but essentially what it does is it soups them up. It makes them highly activated to be able to clear that virus. Those cells were then injected back in and theoretically they went in and destroyed any cells that were still had this latent EBV or chronic EBV infection. Now, in that one individual, they did then see clinical benefits um, from that treatment. Importantly, as you've heard me talk about with uh, lots of other MS research videos, a single individual is not enough to really make any sort of definitive conclusions around that work. But off the basis of that, uh, Professor Michael Pender is now doing ongoing uh, trials here in Australia, and I believe they're currently doing a phase two trial um, with a larger group of people. I know that certain uh, number of people have been recruited across a number of the eastern states of Australia, and that trial is ongoing at the moment. Similarly, there's a group in America called uh, ATARA that are doing a similar sort of treatment. Now, one of the differences uh, that I know that they're looking at is that they're using healthy donor T cells for their treatment approach. So they've got healthy donor T cells that are being cultured with EBV to, to again, help with the clearance of that. But then those are being injected into people living with multiple sclerosis. Again, I believe their initial trials um, are looking at progressive multiple sclerosis. Uh, and seeing what benefits can be derived from that treatment approach. Now, their rationale behind that, based on things that I've read online from a number of researchers involved in that, is that they believe using healthy donor T cells will mean that those T cells might be more effective as they haven't got some of the, the side effects of having lived with an autoimmune disease um, from a number of years. 
I'm not 100% sure whether Professor Michael Pender's work and the trials that are being done here are using healthy donor T cells or whether he's using, still using his initial um, strategy of getting T cells out of the individual and then putting them back in. Uh, but we will follow up and I'll get some more details on that. I'm really hopeful that we might be able to interview a couple of researchers from each of those different trials to get them to talk about the strategies that they're using uh, and any initial results that they may have from those trials. So I guess what's important is that we're going from some of the information that's been found uh, around the potential role of Epstein-Barr virus as uh, a part of the cause of multiple sclerosis and then thinking ahead as to how this may be a novel treatment approach for people living with multiple sclerosis. Importantly, we have a couple of different um, options here. So we have the development of an EBV vaccine, which could be used as a preventative measure, or we're also looking at immunotherapy therapeutic approaches to clear that chronic infection to help uh, people who are currently living with multiple sclerosis. All of this research is at a very early stage. I can't stress that enough, but exciting things to think about. We will keep reporting on any developments in this area because we know that it is particularly interesting to our community and we've had a fantastic response to all of our videos so far. As always, if you do have any questions about anything that I've said in these videos, please do comment below and I'll make sure that I respond as quickly as possible. Otherwise, thanks for listening. I hope you found this video interesting, informative, and most importantly, easy to understand. And I look forward to bringing you more updates in the future. Thanks.